So yeah, so all right. So this is a one of examples of a two dimensional vector field, and and we define a divergence of a vector field, right? So divergent. Why do you use divergent if you want to find the flow, the rate of flow, uh, rate of yeah, rate of uh, fluid flow at a certain point, uh, if uh, the red yeah, flowing out higher than flowing in, then you have a positive divergence. If divergence is negative, we have everything sucked into that point. Yeah, so if you have negative divergence zero, the flowing in and flowing out are the same. So uh, if you find the divergence of a vector field at any point, let's say get zero, when you compute the divergence of the vector field at any point. So those kind of field is called a uh, solenoidal field. At the same time, we were discussing curl of a uh, vector field. It is a measurement of a circulation of a field at a particular point. Right? at this point. If the curl, uh, let's say you compute the curl of a vector field, uh, everywhere the curl of a vector field is zero everywhere. So those kind of uh, fields are called uh, irrotational, not rotating, irrotational fields. Rotation, not rotating those fields, vector fields are on a curvy one, yeah, not rotational. Yep, so curl of any vector, curl of any vector field is solenoidal. That means uh, when you, the curl of uh, a vector field is this, if you take the divergence, this is always zero. Anyway, right? so curl of any vector field uh, always yeah, is a solenoidal field. And right? this one, when you simplify this, uh, you will realize that if uh, this field is, uh, if this field has, uh, yeah. Continuous, yeah, first or uh, first or second derivatives. Uh, let's assume yeah, this is continuously differentiable. Yeah. So then, yeah, so this, yeah, this is equal to zero. Curl of any field is solenoidal field. And the other one, yeah, to the conservative field, right? Conservative field is said to be. Yeah, so a feel, yeah, a feel is said to be conservative if there exists a scalar function such so that the yeah, gradient of that scalar function. So yeah, this is yeah, this one is equal to that field f. Then we call f is yeah, so f is conservative, conservative field. So this P is called the potential for this yeah, field, right? So how do we uh, find this P? Yeah. So yeah, this is also, so you can find infinitely many Fs because yeah, when you add the constant, yeah, this is also, this satisfies this one because when you differentiate constant, you get zero. Yeah. So therefore, this one also is a pure potential for f, right? So how do you find this uh, potential function, or how do you show that that this uh, field is conservative? Yeah, that's the question. So how do you prove uh, this is a conservative field? So you have to find you have to show there exists a scalar function, scalar value function, such that that field is equal to gradient of field. 
yeah so later i will yeah later i will so in this uh document i in this uh pdf i think i will explain that how do you find yeah so potential function how do you show that a field is conservative yep. so in this document i think i will explain that in this slide in this uh document right so at the moment yeah so so this is the definition of a uh, conservative field if a field is a conservative one right so you could find a scalar functions of that gradient of that scalar function is same with this yeah this function f the vector function so later i will yeah <clears throat> I will explain that. Yeah, we can say that. So when you simplify this, if this is a conservative field, so if it's a conservative field, it is always irrotational. That means, yeah, when you simplify gradient cos, yeah, gradient of that, yeah, for phi. So this is always equal to yeah zero. That means if the field is conservative, it is always irrotational. Any conservative field is irrotational. Yeah, later I will explain that to you. Let I will explain. I think after defining line integrals, yeah. So I will explain that here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The defining line integrals. I will explain how to show that is uh, f is a how to show that f is a conservative field. And how do if it is conservative, how do you obtain this C, right? So if there exists a scalar function such that f, yeah, big f, yeah, field f is equal to gradient of c, then we say f is conservative. How do you show that? Yeah, later I will do that. Okay. Yeah, let me yeah, let me summarize what we learned so far. Yeah, so yeah, solenoidal. Solenoidal, remember, yep, so divergence of a vector field. Uh, yep, so divergence. If the F is solenoidal, divergence of this vector field is zero everywhere, then we can say F is solenoidal. It can be expressed as the curl of yeah, yeah. So we know that divergence. Yeah. So if f is uh yeah, yeah. So every solenoid, yeah, field can be expressed as the curl of some other, yep. Yeah, some other, yeah, curl of some other, yeah, let's say. So this is your solenoidal, yeah, this can be expressed as the curl of some other field, let's say. Yeah, G is the other, yeah. Yeah, so we know that this one, is equal to zero. Yeah. So that is correct. Yeah. So any, yeah, so any solenoidal, yeah, so this is solen yeah, if, yeah, if you define in this way, yeah, so this becomes solenoidal, yeah. Every solenoidal 
yeah, feel can be expressed as the curl of sound mother, yeah, sound mother vector field, yeah, because this one is equal to zero. If this is continuously differentiable, yep. So if this is continuously differentiable, and curl of any and all vector field always resides on my curl of any, curl of any, yeah. Yeah, same thing, yeah. Curl of any, yeah, curl of any vector field. Or as a sign. So we know, yeah, because divergence of this, divergence of curl of any vector field is always zero. Yeah, that's true. Divergence of every solenoid vector field is zero. Yep, that's right. Divergence. If f is solenoidal, divergence of that vector field is equal to zero at everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Conservative field. Are uh, rotational, yeah, that's right. Rotational conservative field. If F is a conservative field, then you can F can be expressed in this way. We can find a scalar value function such, such that grade F is equal to gradient of simple. This is the scalar value function, and yeah, it is irrotational, yeah, irrotational. That means curl of F, which is curl of gradient of F. Yeah, this one is equal to zero. Yeah, if this one is continuous, yeah, continuously differentiable. Yeah, I will, I will, yeah, explain that. In this uh, this slide, out. yeah, this is the summary. Yeah, if you have any questions related to this, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, so, so now we are going to discuss line integrals. So, line integral in a vector field and line integral in a scalar field, right? So, this is the motivation, right? So, here we have a path. And this is the castle. And what is this like? You know, see, yeah, so a rescue team, uh, yeah, is taking this path. Path is known, right? This is given two dimensional path, let's assume. Any dimension uh, for, um, for this one, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have two dimensional known path, right? We know the equation of this. Uh, two-dimensional one, and uh, and the radiation function, yeah. So it, which is a scalar function. So you know the, uh, yeah. So radiation function. So you can find the radiation at any point, uh, yeah, in this uh, plane. So at this point, yeah, we know the radiation. Radiation. So. Uh, for different different point, you have different different radiation, right? Here you, yeah, shall, yeah. So we get lot of radiation than these these points, right? So a risk IT rescue team uh, taking uh, taking this route, right? And while they are taking this route, uh, they get. Yeah, they get exposed to this radiation. So, right. So we want to compute the total amount radiation they got. Yeah, they got exposed to this radiation. Exposed to this radiation while they are they are taking this route. So, for that, we compute the line integral. Line integral. So if you know the function of this radiation, let's say, yeah, let's say you know the function, yeah, radiation. And let's assume we have this the radiation function. So yeah. So how do you find the total amount uh, of radiation exposed to? Yeah. 
uh, this uh, this risk, uh, rescue to, uh, team gets exposed to this radiation. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So let's see this uh, path is C. So if you integrate the radiation function along this curve, that gives you the DS. The DS is this infinite infinitesimal yeah distance yeah or arc then so over over path c yeah so this gives you the total amount radiation gathered by this yeah rescue team yeah while they while the team goes uh, takes this path all right so this is the yeah so this is uh, this is the line integral yeah line integral yeah so in scalar field yeah this is the scalar function so similar yeah so this is the scalar function um you can compute this so this so this is the motivation yeah let's try to prove this one yeah this equation so let's say uh, you can do that, uh, then uh, you have a smooth path. So let's assume, yeah, this is smooth. Or what does it mean? If your path is smooth, if your curve is smooth, right? So, so these derivatives are continuously, are continuous. Let's say on this, uh, on this interval a, b. If if these functions x x component yeah so you could write this pad in parametric way like this r uh, can be written in terms of t and this is x component y component if the first derivatives of x and y are continuous yeah on this interval uh, the considered interval then we say that curve that path is smooth they yeah, are smooth path smooth curve or smooth yeah this is a smooth two-dimensional curve if the first derivative of these x and y are continuous on this interval similarly you can define smooth curve in three-dimensional space yeah, if these derivatives are continuous on the corresponding yeah so on this interval right? right so let's assume the path is smooth right then you can compute yeah then you can compute the line integral so yeah this is the line integral in scale of field yep yeah. right let's try to prove this one yeah let's try to prove this one Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is your path. C is a smooth path, right? Smooth curve, two or three dimensional. Yeah, let's consider three dimensional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's split into yeah these uh, sub arcs. Uh, let's split your smooth curve into small small parts, infinitesimal. It's yeah. Uh, uh, let's consider in yeah this bit yeah. So yeah, the length of this uh yeah infinitesimal uh sub arc is let's say delta delta right delta s delta s right. This one is delta s yep delta s. And and let's assume ah uh, okay let's assume this is a wire wire in three dimensional space and and let's assume uh, you know the density or you know the mass of this wire or you know the mass mass of this wire per or oh, this is very very slow yeah if you know let's say let's assume uh, you know the mass per unit length of this wire at any point right right okay uh, you know the function that means you know the density of the wire or mass 
So you need ln of the y at any point is given. Yeah, is given by f of f of x, y, and z. Yeah. So you know the yeah, you know the mass per unit length, right? And what is the mass of this bit? Yeah, so you can find the mass of that bit. So which is, uh, if you know the mass per unit length, at a certain point, yeah, we can find the mass per uh, unit, uh, yeah, unit length at this point. What is that? Yeah, f of x, i, y, i, z, i. Uh -huh. This is the mass per unit. Yeah, this is the mass per unit length at this point. And our length, so this is the length we are considering. Yeah, you have to, if you want to get the mass of this uh, yeah, sub arc, so you have to multiply that, multiply f by that length delta s i. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, this length is infinite infinitesimal, very small, very small, right? So if you, yeah, if you want to get the mass of this entire wire, so what do you, so what do you do? You have to sum. So here we split uh, the entire wire into how many pieces? Yeah, in number of pieces and yeah, I goes from one to n, yeah, and yeah. So Right, so this is the mass. This is the mass of the entire wire. If uh, this uh, sub arc or this yeah, this bit is infinitesimal, yeah, so you then you can yeah take the limit delta goes to zero. Then this is same with, I think we know, yeah, this is same with integral over C, F, D, S, yeah, this one, no? Yeah. Uh, Two-dimensional and three-dimensional space, okay, yeah. Okay, this is the definition of line integral. Yeah. Of a scalar value function f along c, along path c. Simple. Yeah. yeah, so later, yep, so you can change the variable. You, if uh, sometimes you need to change, you can, you want to change s to t. Yeah, so how do you do that? Very simple. So you know the conversion. Remember our conversion? The relationship between S and T. Remember this conversion? Yeah, so we can apply, yeah, we can use this conversion. So you can write this term instead of ds. Yep, so you can convert this integral Yep, so you can write everything in terms of t. Yep, so yep, like this. So now your t variable varies from where to where. Let's assume a from a to b. Uh -huh, then a to b, f, everything in terms of t now. x of t, y, is, y of t. Yep. And the conversion here. Yeah, so this one, if it is three dimensional, yeah, so you have to consider another dimension, z, and your conversion would be square root of this one in addition to these two, you get another. Simple, yeah, this is the definition of line integral of function, scalar value function f along a smooth curve C, along a smooth curve C, yeah. So curve is smooth, curve is smooth. So let's compute, let's, uh, to understand this definition, 
Yeah, let's compute, uh, yeah, line integral of this. Yep. So line integral of this is a scalar value function. So this is your function, right? So f of uh, three dimensions, you have x, y, and z. Uh, do you know this path? Path is given where c is the line segment shown in figure, in, in this figure, yeah. Uh, this is the path, straight line segment, yeah. Yeah, so you are, so this is smooth, yep, yeah. it's smooth. You don't have any corners or cusp, right? Yeah, so this is smooth, that means uh, first derivative of this, uh, so you can, yeah, find, yeah, so you can write this, uh, yeah, line segment in terms of D, in terms of D, so x component y and z yeah so let's let's write yeah x x of t y of t and z of t yeah and and what is the yeah boundary of t yeah we have to find that t varies from where to where yeah yeah, so let's find that. Yeah, so if you, uh, yeah, if you take the projection of this uh, three-dimensional one, yeah, so this is the projection on to O, X, Y plane. Yeah, so let's uh, draw that. Uh-huh. Oh, very simple. Y equals MX. Yep, Y equals MX. So y equals mx, yep, so, so this is the x coordinate, yeah, 0 to 1. Uh, this is 0, y changes from 0 to 2. Uh, okay, you can write the relationship between x and y. x, y is equal to 2x. If, yeah, if x is equal to t, parametric t, yep, so your y is equal to two t here x varies from where to where x coordinate zero to one yeah uh -huh. so t varies from zero to one yeah so you know the boundary yeah if you want so let's write this one in terms of t yep uh, x coordinate t y coordinate uh, two t z so let's, uh, yeah, so let's uh, take the projection of this uh, three-dimensional one into this O, X, Z plane. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is very simple because it is a straight line. Yeah, you get this, yeah, so this is so you can write the relationship between yeah, X and Z, yeah, you know, T, yeah. yeah, this one also T, yeah. And we know the boundary of T, T changes from zero to zero to one. Then you get this three dimensional, yeah, path, R. So R is with expressed in terms of T, yeah, we better convert this one in terms of, yeah, T, right? So t varies from zero to one. Uh huh. So write your f in terms of t. Yeah. So you know x x is equal to t. Uh huh. T squared minus what is y? Y is two two t. Yeah. Two t two t and and z equal z is t. Yep. X plus fun express your function in terms of t, yeah, 3t. And yeah, we know the conversion s is ds is equal to, remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. So remember this one, yeah, conversion. Gt, yep, so put this one. Yeah, for that you have to compute first derivative of x, yep, 
Now, the state with respect to T is one. Okay, let's plug that one. Uh, I don't have space, I will. So, ds is square root. This is one. Uh, first derivative of uh, first derivative of y uh -huh, with respect to two, uh, yeah, t is two squared four. Yeah, first derivative of this is one. One squared is one, mm -hmm. and this is t t. Yeah, t t. Yeah. All right. Square root of six dt everything uh, this is constant yeah yeah so take uh, this constant term in front of integral sign yeah, now it's a simple integral yeah. so yeah so now uh, where is it going to get yeah. i get this so this is the line integral this is the line integral. This is how we compute the line integral of this function over this path C. C path is over this path. So let's assume this is your radiation uh, function. If the, uh, uh, let's uh, say, yeah, uh, this is the rescue team, uh, yeah, going from this point to that, along this path and and they got exposed to uh, this is the amount of radiation they got exposed to yeah uh, yeah yeah total amount of radiation they got exposed to mm -hmm. then they travel along uh, this spot cut it make sense yeah, you could uh, compute line integral not only for smooth paths, but also for piecewise continuous smooth curves. So here, if you look at this path, here, look at this path. Now, this is smooth. This, this bit is smooth, and this bit separately smooth. But at this point, it is not smooth. Uh, so it is a corner, yeah? Is not defined, but you could yeah, find the line integral piece by piece. First, if you want to find the line integral for entire path, you break into parts. You first compute this line in uh, line integral of f over this bit, and then you compute this bit and this bit and that and this, then sum that up sum that up like this. If you have a piecewise smooth path, then how do you find the line integral of f over that path? So you can find bit by bit. Yeah, so first compute this bit, line integral of this bit. Then you find this bit. And finally, you add them all together, then you get the line integral of f over a piecewise continuous one. Not only for smooth uh, paths, you could find, you could compute the line integral over a piecewise paths. Let's compute one of, yeah, so this, yeah, here we go. So this is smooth, piecewise, right? Piecewise smooth, right? So you could find the line integral over C1 first, then line integral over C2 and C3, the end, and then you can finally, if you add them all together, then the, you can compute the line integral over entire C. C is this one, this one, this one. Okay, let's, yeah, let's find that. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's find. Mm -hmm. Okay, C1. Aha, uh -huh. all right. This is C1 path. Aha, uh -huh. this is uh, this very smooth. Yeah. Yep, yeah, see, let's write that in terms of 
a parameter t yeah c let's write yeah c path mm -hmm. c varies uh -huh. this is y axis uh this uh, the coordinates are z coordinate is zero on this path and x coordinate also zero uh-huh yes okay x coordinate zero z coordinate zero and what about uh yeah y coordinate varies from zero to two okay if i put two if i put t here yeah so my t varies from zero to two right so this is c1 bit c2 bit okay let's write so this is uh yeah this is uh your r so i yeah so yep so this is your r this is your r yeah so let me remove this So this is your R path. R of T. Yeah, so right. First bit, yeah, C bit, C1 bit is all right. T varies from 0 to 2. Uh -huh. Then let's write this one, C2. Ah, uh, what about, yeah, so yeah, Y coordinate is constant, yeah. Mm -hmm. constant value what about z z coordinate does not change and i take zero value yep and yep and uh x x varies from zero to one okay and if i put if you start the parameter so this T varies from 0 to 2 here. Now I start from 2 to other side. Let's put yeah 3 or something. Yeah. Then I have to put here. So here x coordinate starting from 0 to up to 1. Okay. Uh -huh. So now this is T value. Uh huh. Then I should put t minus two. If I put two into here, uh huh, x coordinate becomes zero. Linearly linear. These these are linear, right? These are straight lines, line segments. That's why I put linear terms, not curvy one. If you have curvy, yeah, uh, definitely these is not. These are not non, uh, These are not linear. Yeah. So. Yeah, plug this one into here, uh, zero, from zero to da, 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 one. Okay, that is okay. And let's uh, take care of this bit, C3. Yeah, so and, uh, if you move from here to there, uh, yeah, X coordinate uh, does not change. Yeah, X coordinate is one. This one. And what happened to Y and Z? Uh, y also remains the same here. Yeah, remains the same. Yeah, yeah, I will put here 3, 2. 3, 2, we yeah, are better uh, because this is 0 to 1, 3 to 4. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, if you start off with three, then I have to put, yeah, Z coordinate started from zero, then because these are line segments, uh, T minus three. Yep, so then when you plug this one into here, yeah, you get one, yep. So, so this is the path we are going, yeah, starting from here to, and ending at this point. Yep, this is the path. And yep, so first find the line integral when you move from this point to that because it is a 
smooth path, right? So what is the line integral? Uh, do you know the function? Do you know the function? Yeah, so if you know the function, uh, function is not knowing. Yeah, so like that here, look, look at this here. From zero to one, so same thing here, same thing, zero to two. Uh, you can take yeah, 2t or t. So this is uh, from 0 to 1, and this is from 0 to 2. If you put 2 here, yeah, you can you can put 0 to 1. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I will answer this a little later, right? Wait. Yep, so like that, uh, you can find the line integral o of the function over this, and then line integral of f over this, and line integral of f over this, and add them up together. Then you can get the line integral of f over the entire c. Entire C is these three parts. Right. If equal to E two F yes C three. Yeah. Very easy, right? Very easy to find that. Yeah, so this is the line integral of a scalar value function along C, right? So, so what if uh, this is a vector value? Let's uh, discuss line integral of a vector value function along a path. So this is the motivation. Uh, this is the practical example. Uh -huh. So, so here you, we have two islands. So this current, C current is known, right? So that means you know the field. So, so yeah, you know the yeah vector field. Let's say this is vector field of the current, C current, right? It is known. Let's, yeah, this is two dimensional. Yeah. So it is known and you know the equation of this path, right? So it is also known, say R. Yeah, so R in terms of well, T, yeah, parameter. So then, yeah, find the line integral of F when you travel, uh, when you travel from this island to that over this path. So current is defined. Let's assume, yeah, we know the current vector field of this uh, ocean, right? Yeah, so we know the flow of the ocean. Yeah, this is the vector flow, the yeah, vector field, right? When you travel from here to there, how much fuel uh, will you need to travel from? You, uh, yeah, you can compute. You can compute uh, yeah, how much fuel you need to travel. You need to travel from this island to that island along this path under this sea current. So this is the sea current. Uh, it is known. Let's yeah, this is known. So this is the sea current. Yeah. So you can find yeah, work done. Yeah, work done on this uh, ship, under this vector field, when you move from, from this island to that island, along this path, how much do you mean? Yeah, work done. We compute the work done, total work done on this object, on this ship, uh, traveling from this island to that island along this path 
under this yeah vector field yeah so that is the practical problem yeah so we compute that yeah so we compute the yeah, line integral of f yeah f yeah of along this Yeah, let's find work done. Yeah, so how do you find the work done, right? Yeah, so for instance, yep. Yeah, so this, let's assume this is the field, right? This is the field. Let's assume. And this is the path you had to take, right? And yeah, this is field, yeah, field. Yeah, when you take this, uh, yeah, so when you, yeah, let's say this is force or field or force, yeah. Yeah, field force, the force field, right? F is a force field. If you want to find the work, uh, work done, you know, uh, and you have done physics, right? So work done on an object. So, so remember, yeah, this uh, yeah object is you apply this much force F. And with this force, uh, this object is moving. Yeah, because of this force, yeah. Say, uh, this, uh, yeah, for, yeah, this check is moving along this, yeah, this x axis with this distance, right? Like this, yeah, this distance. Let's say this is, uh, let's say D. Then the work done on this area. Uh, yeah. On this uh, yeah, object under this uh, force is equal to what? Yep. What is the work done? W is because you have done physics. Yep. What is the work done when you pull this object with this force? Uh, and yeah, with this distance. Yep. What is the work done? Work done. Yes, makes sense, okay. Now the force is in this direction. You have to take the tangential component of that uh, force. How do you do that? So you can find the tangent vector. You know the tangent vector. Yeah, take the dot product of this force with that tangent vector. So this is the tangential force. Yeah, you need tangential force to find the work done, right? So yeah, T dot yeah, F dot T is the tangential force. Tangential force. If if an object moving from moving along this yeah along this curve C, right? Yeah, so. This is the tangential force. Yeah, what is the uh, work done? Yeah, work done is F dot T, T is the tangential uh, vector. Yeah, F dot T and DS is small line. Yeah, so this infinitesimal distance. Yeah. Now, how do you find the total work done on the object under this force? Yeah, you have to sum that up, sum that up. When you sum that up, you get total work done. If you, if, if delta is very, if, if you take the limit, yeah, take the limit of yeah, that, yeah, let's say, if delta will just see your limit, this would be the best would be integral over C dot T yeah, T is T is the tangential. Yeah, so here we go.
Here, here we go. Yep. So this is the total total work done on on that ship traveling from first island to second island along the bad sea under this yeah yeah sea current. Here, this is the equation. This is called the line integral of f over c. Yeah. Line integral of this vector field over, over that bad c. Make sense? Does this make sense? Cool, but yeah. Now, yeah, so now you can convert uh, this parameter to t. T is very easy to find. Yeah, if you write your path in terms of T, right? In terms of T, yeah, very easy to deal with. Yeah, now I change the variable S to T like this. So this is the, yeah, so here we go. Very simple. The line integral of F over C. Yeah, so this is one. Very, so this is the, Work done, actually, this is work done. Work done on an object uh, when a particle move under a certain vector field. Gravitational, it could be gravitational or fluid flow or any, anything, anything, right? Yeah, so this is the work done. Perhaps. Yeah, so, right, so I will uh, move this particle. So this is your famous helix curve, right? I will move, move a particle from this point to that point along this helix curve. So, so for that, so I know the vector field here. So this is the vector force. So vector force, yeah, a force vector, a force field, yeah. So this is the force acting on on the object here. So if I move this object along this curve, so this is the force acting on that, right? This is the force acting on that. So force is given path. We know the path the equation of the path here. Force force field is given and what is the work done when you move this particle from this point to that point along this curve under this force field. Let's compute. Let's compute the work done right by this force field, right? So what is the equation? Yep, so line integral, yeah. So this is the fundamental equation. You can convert this one into, yeah, so y. So write that one in terms of t. Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, so very easy, yep. Mm -hmm. So tangent vector, yeah, tangent vector. Remember, uh, unit tangent, how do you find velocity, velocity of the path, yeah, so velocity and and divided by its magnitude, remember, remember, yep, magnitude, yeah, which is this, all right. Mm -hmm. And this is the conversion, yeah, this is equal to ds, ds, remember ds by dt, is magnitude of speed, yeah. Remember, yeah, ds. Yeah, so let's use this equation, yeah. Yeah, so f dot d ds is equal to this, uh-huh. Okay, yeah, so for that you, have, you need to compute first derivative, yeah, compute that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so first derivative, yeah, so what is the first derivative, yeah, uh, dot is equal to, I use this notation, yeah, minus sine, sine t cos, 
cost one. Okay, this is the first derivative. Okay, magnitude of that. Ah, uh, yeah, first derivative. Okay, I computed that. Write your force field in terms of yeah t. Yeah, you know the root. So this is the root. Uh, this is the equation of the root. Yeah, we want to find the force field along that root. Yeah, substitute. Yeah, substitute that. Yeah, so then minus half cos t, right? I first component minus half sine t and one quarter. Yeah, one quarter constant. Yeah, one quarter. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Here we go. So, yeah, if you have this one, F written in terms of T, and you have this, yeah, then you can take the dot product. Yeah, taking dot product. Yeah, taking dot product of these two. Yeah, one half cos T times minus sine T. Yeah, like this, yeah. Now you can get this equation, this uh, solution very easily. Yeah, so this is the work done on the object. If you move along uh, this object from this point to that, under this force field, yeah, under this force field, yeah, this is the work done. Very easy to find, right? Very easy to find, yeah. Yeah, if you have any questions, just yeah, I guess you have.